Okay, so in this episode, we are gonna be going over data modeling in HateBase. Specifically, that is how do you create tables, put fields on those tables, and then define associations between the tables. Uh, I think the best way is to just jump right into an example. So let's get going. Okay, so first off, I'm starting a new 8Base workspace that I created just for this video called Simple CMS. Pretty much we're gonna be creating two tables uh, for the sake of this demonstration, one called posts and the other one called authors. That's why I called the workspace Simple CMS. I hope that makes sense to you. And so before we jump in and start creating those tables, um, I also wrote a simple little spec uh, for what we're gonna be doing. So on the post, oh, no, let me make that bigger. Okay. Ah them all right well anyway so for the, this is gonna be the post table and on the post table we're gonna make a title a body a publishing date and as well as add an author relationship to it which is gonna be a belongs to relationship when it comes to the author table we're gonna add a pin name which is gonna be text posts which is gonna be a has many relationship as well as avatar which is gonna be an image file all right, so let's just jump back to that workspace and I'm gonna click on create a new table. Since I don't have any tables, this is the layout I'm gonna see. However, you can find all this in the data page of your management console for the workspace that you want it to be in. So I'm gonna click on new table and I'm gonna write in posts. So let's start, yeah, let's start with posts. So first off, I'm gonna give the posts a status. All right, and so the status is gonna be type switch. You can think of switch almost as like a truthy falsy type thing or a select. For example, we have on off, yes, no, so on and so forth, but I'm gonna choose custom and then I'm gonna add in a list of different options. Um, those being draft, in review, and published. Published, cool, and I think Sorry if my head is covering some of the fields here, but essentially these are the different statuses that we're gonna allow our post to have. We're gonna make it mandatory by clicking on the mandatory validation, as well as set a default, which is going to be draft, so that every new post we create defaults to draft status. Cool. Next, I'm gonna add the title. I'm just gonna try to go through these pretty quickly. Uh, 55, and then we're gonna make it mandatory. And then we're also gonna say no duplicate values, which means that titles are gonna be unique so that we could query by them if we wanted to. Then I'm gonna add a body text. And since, it, that, since the body text could be really long, I'm just gonna add like 20,000 characters. And then let's add a publishing date. So as you can see, just all I have to do is select the type. We're gonna make that mandatory. And then we're gonna handle, or 8Base is gonna handle on the back end all the validation to make sure that the right types are only being saved to the database. And so then I think that, yeah, that's it for our post table. The only thing that we're gonna wanna do is create the authors association, but we're gonna wait to do that until after we've created our authors table, which we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna click on new table up here. Give it a minute, cool. Authors, an author is gonna have a pin name which is gonna be text. Let's make that mandatory and no duplicate values. So mandatory and unique. And then we're gonna give an author an avatar. So this is great. So if I just click file and I click on image, create field. So now within the management console, everything has been configured to be able to upload files to the table. However, it's also been created so that from your GraphQL API, you can do file uploads. We'll go over how all that works in another video, but just so you know, adding like a profile picture essentially to the author was that easy. So now I'm gonna click back to the post table, right? And so if I wanted to, I could say that post has an author and then select type table, but instead, just for convenience, I'm gonna grab authors over here, drop it on top of the posts table definition, and then it's gonna populate so all that information for me. And so here we're gonna look at some of these options. So first off, this is the table relationships. We can see with this graphic right here that the author has many posts and the posts belong to a single author. That's exactly what we want. If we wanted to change that, we could create a many-many relationship, uh, one-to-many in the other direction, 
or even a one-to-one -one relationship, right? But, and we'll go over more about relationships once again in another video. However, for now, know that defining those um, associations between the tables really is that straightforward. And then we're also going to say that the author's field is, is uh, mandatory for a post. I'm just going to change that to author. Cool. And then on this relational field name, that is actually how is the relationship described on the other table. So post is totally fine in our case. Just to make that clearer, after I create this association done, if I went over to authors, now we can see that an author has many posts. That's exactly what we want. So just to create a few records in our workspace or in our database right now, I'm going to click over to the data tab here, which is right next to schema, and let's create our first author. We're going to call this author or give the author a pen name of Seb. That's me. And then give him an avatar. Upload the avatar. And second, add the row. Cool. First author was created. So now, if we wanted to go in here and create our first post, it's going to be a draft. We're going to say first post is the title. A really interesting blog post is the post itself, <laughs> the publishing date is today, and then Seb is going to be the author. And now our post was created. So it's great that you have the ability to jump right into the management console and start creating, updating, deleting records using the UI. However, it'll probably be very common that you want to perform these same type of actions uh, using the API. And one thing that's so powerful about IPS, as well as just so cool, is based on your schema definitions right here, we generate all the GraphQL resources that you need to perform CRUD actions through the API. What do I mean by that? I'm going to jump over to the API Explorer, which we will go into depth within probably the next few videos. However, right here, if I were to say, okay, well, I want to make a query. And in that query, I want to query a posts list, right? Since we created posts and you saw us do that in that video for both list queries and normal queries, mutations and subscriptions, which is web, WebSocket real-time updates, those GraphQL resources have been created for you. So for example, if we wanted to query this list of posts, we could say, okay, for each item in the list, whoa, we want the ID, the title, and the author, which for the author, we want the pin name. Cool. So I'm going to run that query, and you can see that we only have one uh, post. That makes sense. And it gave us our ID, the title, as well as the author, and the data on the author. So that was a relational query that just came right out of the box and was ready to go. Like I said, we're going to go over so many more of these things in depth really soon. However, I hope that you found this video very valuable in getting started on how to use you know, basic usage of the data builder, as well as how to create some records within your workspace. If you want to stay updated on future videos, please subscribe to the channel, as well as feel free to ask any questions in the comments or reach out directly. Hope you found this valuable and looking forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.